everyone and welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam and I'm Wendy and today we're outside and oh we're excited because we actually get to have our hands yeah. in the soil. Um, we did an episode quite a while back I think it was oh, episode 16 I think episode 16 planting a bare root mm -hmm. rose and after that one aired we had quite a number of questions from people saying well I'd love to plant a bare root rose uh, one supplied by Botanist but yes. can I do it in a container? Yeah, and for various different reasons, sometimes they've got balconies to work with or they've only got a small patio area and they want right. to be able to move their furniture in and out, but they want roses. Yeah. And another big one is yeah. that the climate. Sometimes yes. the climate is just not suitable for the zone roses and it's really nice to have that option to have something that's a little more say delicate. Yes, you grow it in the container and then you move it to a protected area but we're going to touch on all of those things exactly. in, in uh, this episode of the Botanist Garden Club. Now Wendy, we talked earlier about the types of roses right. that you can plant in containers and there you can basically do all of them except one. Yes, the only ones you don't want to put in a container because they just won't thrive are the really tall large climbing roses. Yeah. Any of the other ones are perfectly suitable for growing in containers. I like that. Now there are a number of conditions that apply to all roses uh, and the great thing too is with the containers you can actually move them to these yes. areas in your garden now. One of the things that they do require because they produce so many beautiful flowers is they love to have lots of sunshine so mm -hmm. seven to eight hours of full sun a day is really ideal. Exactly they absolutely love good air circulation mm -hmm. so that means don't put them next to some other shrubs or plants or even the house. Give them room so that all the air can circulate it around. It just makes for a healthier rose plant altogether. Exactly. Now the container itself can pretty much be anything but there's a mm -hmm. minimum of at least say 15 inches across. You want to be able to give that rose a lot of space. The roots need, need the room um, so you want to make sure that it's that is the bare minimum size. Exactly. And it has to have good drainage. So you must have drainage holes in the bottom right. and then to add on to that at least one to two inches of oh, gravel or broken yeah. up shards. Or exactly. There. Elka got some of these for us just to show you. These are yeah. beautiful shards of terracotta. I think an old teapot mm -hmm. from you <laughs> is in there yes. as well. But they, they really add to the, the, the bottom, allow the water to drain mm -hmm. freely because you don't important. want it to be sitting. No. In, That's uh, crucial in for these water. roses to be free draining and that is what they have to have. Right. So that is a really critical area to worry about in right. this case. Now today we're <laughs> planting in a wooden container and that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine because we know it's got holes in the bottom and Elka already prepped the container for us and put some beautiful shards and gravel in the bottom. Right. But you can also use any kind of container, terracotta, uh, plastic. Yeah, plastic is wonderful but mm -hmm. it does tend to conduct the heat in a bit quicker. Mm -hmm. So if you're using plastic, keep that in mind. You'll want to water a little more often. You'll want to just make sure it's not overheating in the area that it's going through. Right. As we mentioned earlier, you really want to make sure your roses never dry up. Mm -hmm. So that's a part to think about. And the terracotta, yeah. they, if they get really, really wet and really, really cold, they can crack. So you end up having your investments sort of ruined. Yeah. So keep those things in mind when you're going to plant. Do a little research before you do it. Yeah, but as we said, pretty much any container will yeah. do as long as it's well draining and large enough to hold your, uh, your rose. Exactly. But of course, also, also to hold your soil. Exactly. Which is very important when it comes to roses and containers. Exactly, and we recommend sort of working in the, the three thirds. So you're you're using one third in this container of good quality potting soil, mm -hmm. one third of aged compost, sort of garden compost, right. and then one third of well aged composted manure. Exactly. And you can sort of double up on the good potting soil mm -hmm. if you can't say find one of the other ones, but make sure you have at least one third of the wonderful well aged and compost or manure. Mm -hmm. That's really important because they're such heavy feeders. They yes. want to produce flowers you want to give them something to produce exactly. with. Exactly. And you want to prepare that soil if you can at least two weeks before you actually get your rose and mm -hmm. plant it. That way they have a, it's sort of like, you know, uh, well-aged wine. You want to yes. you want to be able to give it the opportunity to really mix in all of the ingredients and really mingle so that it's nice and fluffy. Yeah, and, there's and nothing sharp that's exactly. going to attack your little roots when they start exactly. to come out. Something we kind of recommend adding to the soil as well are the lovely cocoa core fiber mm -hmm. and what it does is just allows for more light airiness and it also 
retains a bit more of the water. So you have yeah. a free draining uh, container and you want to have something in there that's going to allow the water to sort of stay or the soil to stay a little bit moist and that core fiber really works well for that. It really does. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that you can actually grab from your house oh, yes. that you could add to the soil as well and it's always really good to add nutrients as mm -hmm. Wendy said to your rose soil because they're very heavy feeders. Uh, one thing that comes to the front of my mind is, is banana peels. Oh yeah, they carry <laughs> potassium within them and you don't need to plant them in the soil necessarily but after you've planted the rose lay them around the base of the soil and that will get the potassium right into the soil. Yeah. And, and uh, magnesium, you can easily add magnesium. You know, go into your uh, bathroom cupboard and get a bit of that Epsom salts that you put in the bathtub and add that to your soil. And that is a really wonderful way to get that magnesium level up in your soil as well. And only about a tablespoon, doesn't require a lot in there. But all of these things are wonderful tricks just to add a little bit more uh, nutrition to the soil for right. them. Right. Okay, well, let's get at it. Okay. We've been doing a lot of chatting. Let's yes. actually get to the planting. So um, this container has been filled about two thirds full with this lovely potting mix that we've got right. put all together and, and we've had yay. our rose soaking overnight 24 hours at least in room temperature water this is crucial those lovely little roots want to be rehydrated yes and they they'll love that just soak it right up mm -hmm. and that will stand them in good stead when you once you plant yeah so We've got the two the two thirds full here. Right. Now Pam's going to add just a little bit more soil to mound it up right. in the middle. Well, Maybe this. I'll hold this Can for you. Hold you. How that? about that? That would exactly. be lovely. So you just take some soil and you're just going to make a little pyramid in the center. <laughs> a little soil pyramid. A little we love soil that. pyramid in that the center so that the the, uh, One more. the rose can sit nicely on top of that. And what we're doing is setting the rose. You'll see this sort of an open part in the bottom there, or mm. a, a little space. We want to set that right on top of that beautiful mound. What we are going to do is spread those lovely rose roots out around it so they're not sort of tight and let them slide down that little mountain. And I'm pushing in so we get rid of all the soil air that's inside that's there. Right. Pam's putting a bit more of this in. Something we want to tell you right now too is if you found that you've planted your rose root a little bit too deep, just remove it and put it back up again. Yeah. You definitely want this bud union to be level with the soil. Yes. And the reason for that is that this, with watering and with constant pressure, is going to compress a little bit. Yes. So if the soil is not high, if it's not uh, high enough, what's going to happen is it's going to get a little bit lower. Right. And then the roots of your rose or the stem of your rose will be too far under the lip of this beautiful container and it won't get the sunshine. That's so right. you want to have the whole thing covered in mm -hmm. sunshine. So press it down firmly yes. after you get it in there and make sure that it's really, really nicely snug in. And then what are you going to do? Water, 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 <laughs> water, water. Water Saturate. like crazy. Yes. You really have to, especially when it's freshly planted, mm -hmm. make sure you give it lots of water. It's a good way to test your container too because if the water doesn't drain away eventually, you know you've got an issue. You yeah. do have to deal with that. But remember, containers need often more watering than if the rose was out in the garden. It's because right. it's contained in a small place. Depending on the container, it could dry out quicker than normal. Yeah. So you've got a real good test on how to yes. figure out if your soil is wet or dry. If you're wondering, then just take your little finger, stick it in, and if you go down about an inch mm -hmm. and it's dry, it needs water. And really with the roses in a container, you probably, it's hard to water too much when yeah. they've got good drainage. Yeah. So really use that finger test quite often and find out if it's dry below. Just don't let it get dry, okay? That's exactly. Our, that's our biggest hint yes. for today. Yes, take care of your roses. Yes. You can also give them some good fertilizer and plant food mm -hmm. through the season. As we said a number of times, they are very heavy feeders. There are special rose uh, uh, food that you can yes. purchase. You fish can get fish fertilizer. Well. We carry mm -hmm. a very, uh, an organic, um, one that yeah. is, yes, that is really, really good for the soil. We've got a fertilizer. It's yeah. made from chicken manure, comes from Quebec, all organic. Mm -hmm. A wonderful thing to add to your container on a, on a regular basis to exactly. keep feeding it. Yeah. Now, we've planted the container. It's beautifully, let's just pretend it's, it's, <laughs> it's bloomed now through the summertime. And we want to get it ready for the winter. Now, um, if you are in a temperate zone, say a zone five, six to eight, Depending on where you are in Canada, you may not have to do too much. That's right. But 
what is always a good sort of rule of thumb is if you are experiencing very cold weather on a regular basis, mm -hmm. even in those temperate zones, you're going to want to protect it. Think about this, the container and this lovely road, rose inside are actually exposed more to the elements than they are in the soil right. in the ground. There's thousands of tons of earth that surround them. Mm -hmm. Here in this container, they've got about, say, mm -hmm. six to eight inches all exactly. around. Yeah. So that's why they need protection. Yes. And so easy to do. Mm -hmm. You just need to move the container to a protected area. Yeah, under the eaves yeah, is... close to the house. Yes, out of the um, rain. Out of the rain, if you're in a rainy area. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to consider putting it up on a couple of wooden blocks to allow That's better drainage idea. as well, plus to get it up off of... Usually, if you pull it close to the house, it's sitting on a cement slab. Mm -hmm. That can get very, very cold. You just want to lift it up just a little bit, exactly. give a little bit. If need be, you might have to wrap it. Bubble uh, wrap, bubble horse wrap. blankets. Yes, uh, anything like that. Yeah. And certainly, if you're in a very windy area, you'll want to protect these beautiful stems Absolutely. as well. Well, you'll want to wrap that as well. Now, and, yeah, extreme yeah. weather. Yes, we I was just going to say. I knew you were going there. <laughs> the extreme weather, you have to protect them even mm -hmm. more so than this. So they can be moved to a cold and dark location to spend the winter. And even in that cold and dark location, if it's incredibly cold, like mm -hmm. way, way, way below freezing, yes. then wrap it. Mm -hmm. Wrap it with blankets, wrap it with bubble wrap. Make sure that it gets that protection. And in extreme weather, say if it's outside and you're thinking it's going to be fine and some extreme weather happens, take it indoors temporarily mm -hmm. until that weather passes. Yes. So you'll have to decide what's best for your area. Mm -hmm. Use your common sense, but just don't let it have an experience that it wouldn't normally have. Yeah. Like anything that is too extreme, don't yeah. let it happen to that. And that's the beauty of containers. You yes. get to be able to move them mm -hmm. to where you want or need them to be. And of course, we have to talk about next season. So you've overwintered it, you're going to bring it back outside. Really good idea to replenish that soil. Yeah. Uh, it's been, you know, depleted. The, nutri depleted. Sure. the yes. nutrients have been taken up by the rose. So again, you want to remove maybe the top third layer of soil. Yeah, or even three to six inches. Yeah. And get rid of that and yeah. put a nice fresh layer of this exact mixture exactly. back on top. Yeah. Give it some good feeding throughout that season as well to sort of kickstart those roots and kickstart the greenery. Yes. And that's how it's going to be in the springtime. And it will last. I think that sometimes you can actually, in these larger containers, mm -hmm. go two to three years and sometimes even more without actually taking the rose out of the container. Mm -hmm. But if you start to see it struggle, whether yeah. that's after two years or three, take it out, get a larger container mm -hmm. and give it what it needs a little bit more of. Exactly. Give it some love. <laughs> some gardener love, which we know that there's lots of gardening love out oh, there. Oh yes. <laughs> well, if you're a regular Botanist Garden Club viewer, you know that we always have a giveaway at the end of the show because we just love to give away stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ask a question of you. So this week, the question is, what items found in your home can be added to your container soil. Hmm. Ah, and send your answer to gardenclubbotanist.com and we're going to draw three lucky winners. Yes. And each of those people will receive a $10 gift certificate each. Awesome. To spend on a rose, perhaps. That's, That's right. Fun. Or some supplements, whatever yeah. it might be. You so can. all of those people who wrote in and called in and said, please do an episode on container rose planting. We hope that this has been helpful to you. And we are looking forward to a glorious spring. We know many parts of Canada are still buried in snow and very very cold but trust Spring us always comes it, it always, always comes, comes. sometimes and it a will. little late but it always comes thank you so much for joining us again today we look forward to seeing you again next week mm -hmm. bye for now bye for now